in the Oxford, it's called an Oxford Etymological Dictionary. The word Morocco comes from the Arabic word, I'm going to erase this at the, well, let me, can I erase more ish? Yeah. First, get a regular dictionary out and turn to ish, I-S-H. Oh, okay, so we don't need to look it up. It's something like, or kind of like. You either more or you're not more. You either more or less. So are you more or less? Girl can be boyish. More something like a boy. So if you're more ish, you're something like a more. If a more is any dark skinned person, I ain't something like a more. I am one. So I'm not more ish. I'm not buying it. You're not going to sell that on me. You're not going to push that down my throat. I'm not. I know too much about words to fall for that. Okay. But the word Morocco comes from the Arabic word, and if you know any Arabs, ask them. Um, I think it's Maghrib. El Aqsa. Maghrib al Aqsa. That's Morocco. And in Arabic, this this phrase means the far or extreme west. So if Morocco means the far or extreme west, <coughs> according to the Europeans and their maps, right. America is where? West, the furthest extreme west. Right. So if this is the furthest extreme west, this is where? Morocco. Morocco. I don't know what's going on on the western shores of Africa. That's a colony of Morocco. This is the empire of Morocco. According to their maps, you're as far west as you can get. So if you tell somebody, I am more, from Morocco, and they tell you, okay, we'll deport you back. No, you won't. You better go get your dictionary. <laughs> the word Morocco means Maghrib al Aqsa or Akusa. Who had a song out back in the day? Mama Cool, Mama Sa, Mama Akusa. Or whatever it was, I think they had it. I think they kind of knew what was up. But Morocco is the far west. <coughs> and we're the people that were found here when the Europeans came to the far west. So I am Al from Morocco, Al Morocco or El Morocco. But uh, the individual people from Jamaica are not Jamaica, they're Jamaican. The Puerto Ricans from Puerto Rico are not Puerto Rico, they're Puerto Ricans. So I'm not Morocco, I'm Morican. That's, me, that's my logic. But you don't have to use that. That's just me. Did that answer your question? OK. Anybody else have any other questions before we proceed with the lecture? And at this point, if you guys can hold your questions and just take notes. Yes, sir. Just one thing. Oh, you know, I definitely want to hear from you because you're on point. In, in the Arabic language, uh, El Madrid, it means the Far East, not the Far West. Remember that. Yeah. 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 Yeah
number of positive ions and electrons. Um, the, uh, uh, chakras are transformers in the form of subtle, subtle plasma fields vibrating at specific... Did, did I go over anybody's head? Does everybody know what a chakra is? Everybody have a clue? Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Okay. I'm just giving you some more clarity on your understanding of chakras. We live in an ocean of energy, and the energy flows in and out of the body through these spiraling vortexes called chakras. But for melanated individuals, they also, the energy also moves in and out of the spir spiraling vortexes called melanin. And energy moves in and out of the spiraling vortexes called your nappy roots. Okay? Yes. Dr. Albert could refer to these so-called chakras as melanin clusters. So, that, so they're trying to keep us away from this melanin aspect of life, period. Because I believe the chakras come from the uh, Indian Kush civilization, or what you now have over there in India. So uh, he referred to the uh, chakras as melanin clusters, not, you know, the name melanin clusters, rather than the word chakras. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hopefully that was helpful. Okay. The spiraling vortexes convert impulses from one frequency to another. When the energy of one octave is open, then the other octaves open up through a resonating effect. So what we did yesterday is start opening some of your spirals and start resonating the way they're vibrating and the frequencies that you're moving at. And that's a very powerful thing for you as individuals. Now, we have hundreds of chakras, but most people focus on nine in particular. Um, and you guys know what those are, right? Okay. Is there anybody that doesn't? No. Okay. You gotta know about the, uh, Okay. There are nine that people focus on most of the time. The first one, the base one is the root or sex center. That's located in the vicinity of the groin. Then you start moving up. You get closer to the navel area. That's one that's the navel center. The solar plexus is right there. Now, those two are kind of close, almost one behind the other. Um, then you move up into the spleen. There's another one in the heart center. You come up to the one in the throat center. The next one up is in the uh, third eye center. The next one up is, in, is the fifth eye center. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. The second one is, the, the, the last one is the crown center. The See, what I gave you guys at level three, I gave you two. Okay? Number one is the root center. Number two is the navel. Number three, I gave you two of them. I gave you the solar plexus and the spleen. Then at number uh, six, I gave you two of them. The third eye and the fifth eye. Third eye is here. The fifth eye is about here. OK? It's about here. And a little more forward for you. All right, a little more forward. There. OK? All right. Obviously, I'm talking about some chakras that they ain't talking about. I must be on the wrong nine. Of these, there are four that people who want to work on their energy should focus most of their energy and attention on. These four are, one, the navel, two, the heart, three, the throat, and four, the head. Now, absolve me for feeling, I guess everybody's feeling like, how did we get here? Today was supposed to be nothing like the first half of the class. The navel center is the solar power of transformation. And it is said to be turned upward with approximately, well, they say 64 petals. The heart center is said to be turned down with eight petals. The throat center is said to be upward or turned upward with 16 petals. When I say petals, they look like lotus flower petals. Oh, yeah. That's what the symbol itself represents. OK, cool. We're we, we in business. Um, 
The heads, did I already do the throw center? No. Uh, okay, right, 16. The head center is the lunar force of distillation, and it is said to be turned downward with 32 petals. That's why in ancient Kemet they would show the sisters and the, you know, with, and, and all these uh, lotus flowers. Huh? Uh, there are 32 petals. The head is the lunar force of distillation. Okay, people got it. Your head is, is the lunar. Down, getting lower down is just solar. Okay. What was the number for the throat or pedal? Sixteen. Now, the reason I'm giving you guys this is because I gave you some information yesterday on melanin and the power of melanin and what you are as a superconductor of millions and millions or billions of mel spiraling melanocytes. And the darker you are, the more walking power you are. You are power and energy in motion. All right. Now, a well-fortified aura, because this is what you're going to start working on. As you start clicking and, re and resonating, your aura is going to start to tighten up. And those brothers that saw that uh, DVD last night, those three of you, I already so you already have some, you've already been triggered a little bit more about the insight into the aura and how you don't want to be bleeding out too much. So now you have the tools to start not bleeding out as much as you may have been. Did any of that stuff make sense to y'all last night? Yeah. yeah. Well, who said, oh, yeah, back there? Somebody back there saw it too? You did? Oh, okay. Where were you when I was asking people to raise hands? All right. Yeah, this is very important for the brothers because these are our warriors. A well-fortified aura, unlike all the information on the words and everything, is your truest form and your most powerful form of self-defense. It is the aura that is the first thing that's going to keep a lot of nonsense up off of you, from knucklehead youngsters to stupid-ass cops and everything else. That's what you want to start working on first. But you had to get the clarity triggered yesterday to even get you here. Some people would have been still stuck in the church if I'd have started talking about this. That's why I did what I did yesterday. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right. The aura has two main divisions. This is very important information. Two main divisions. Now, those of you that already know, I'm sorry if I'm going to bore you to tears. One is known as the psychic beta force. And the psychic beta force is the field of emanated total personality energy that is radiated by the astral body. Because you have more than one body. You have the physical body and you have other bodies. You have thought bodies, ethereal bodies, astral bodies, psychic bodies. You have other bodies. Now, the, the psychic beta field has greater brilliance, brighter <laughs> colors, and a swifter variance to emotional and spiritual conditions. It changes faster than the other one, OK? So if you start out real good, having a good day, and all of a sudden something goes wrong, that particular body will start changing colors faster than the other one. Now, the other one is the physical alpha field. That one's connected more to your physical body. And it is the field of electric energy that emanates from the physical body. OK? Now, they tend to be almond or leaf shaped. They're usually, can I erase this? They tend to be almond and or, of course, I'm not the best artist in town. I, you know, I really don't like to get up and start trying to draw things. Almond or leaf shaped. They tend to be wider coming from the area of the head and getting narrower as you get down to the area of the feet. Now, this thing has been called a few things. Some of the things that they call it, if you want to start researching it, 
are the aura. It's also been called a halo. It has been called a nimbus. Another word for it is glory. It's also called an egg. And it's been called also a mandorla. I personally just call it my cloak. But you call it what you like to call it. Now, um, let me see, let me see, let me see. The two bodies, the one for the, the physical body and the one for the psychic body, are tied to one another the same way your psyche and your body are connected. A powerful order aura is required to shield you from the three primary forces that are set in motion every day to attack you. Now I'm going to give you the three things that are attacking your butt every single day. You may or may not be aware that you're under perpetual attack, but you are under perpetual attack day in and day out. The first form of attack are the unintentional ones that people do not mean to be attacking you. But nonetheless, you are being at, you are in battle. These come from your relatives, friends, neighbors, co-workers, and the occasional stranger you encounter. Like for example, the ones that say, oh, have a blessed day when you get off the bus and you've been talking to them. <laughs> These individuals have, they lack knowledge, and because of their lack of knowledge, it allows their alarm and indignation about, for example, your lifestyle choices, like maybe you're wearing a turban and they have a problem with it, or you might be gay and they have a problem with it, or what, you know, whatever the situation, you got a white girl and they got a problem, whatever the deal is, somebody has some issue with you and your choices. And frequently, it might be something as minor as, what do you mean you're not coming to church today, sis? You going where? You see who? So who? You, you off of who? <laughs> <laughs> Little things like that, believe it or not, are eating away at your energy field. They're chipping at your power. So these people, because they don't agree with your lifestyle choices or your belief systems or the activities that you're involved in, they generate considerable amounts of emotional opposition to you. And frequently they think they're defending themselves against you and your new thing. So in order to defend themselves against whatever their disbelief is about you and your thing, they attack you. And they don't mean to, but it is still an attack nonetheless. And your very strong aura will protect you from that. And now you guys know that you have so much power you can make it strong just because you think about it. Now. The other type are those that are deliberate and they are intentionally lost. It's the second type. These are the ones that are sent at you from soldiers, cops, guns, laws, specific words that police people deliberately say to you trying to hurt you. These are deliberate attacks on you. Diet, things that the system puts in the food that they know you out not to eat. Like for example, you may not like pork, but they have it in the candy and you don't know it's there. And it's in the cheese and you don't know it's there. And it's in the ice cream and you don't know it's there. And it's in the bread and you don't know it's there. So that is deliberate. They are, um, for example, the toothpaste. How many people know that most of the toothpaste you buy in the store has rat killer and insect killer in the toothpaste? You knew that? Yeah. yeah. That's on purpose. Yes. See, so what they do is they attack from inside out. And frequently, gun, cops just coming up with their guns drawn is also an attack on you. And they're eating and chipping away at you. Um, the other ones are the psychic missiles that these people have hired, their little psychic workers to do damage to my people. They also have their advertisers with their subliminal garbage. The uh, suggestions, the business and government that's always advertising and doing all these things to undermine you and chip away at your finances or your thought processes. 
that's specifically deliberate and intended for you. They are trying to determine what they want you to be and determine what they think you should be, which is not yourself. The other one, or the third type, are the incidental ones. They're not necessarily deliberate, and they're not necessarily in intended, but they're incidental. These are things like earthquakes, electrical storms, certain colors, loud noises, like we're trying to do the lecture and they're over here shooting off whatever they're shooting off at this game. But whatever, that's an attack. It's an incidental one, but it's chipping away at your power. You know what I'm saying? So certain vibrations, sounds, noises, odors, colors, and other man-made energy sources that emit electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic frequencies, and electromagnetic pulses attack you. And these kinds of things will destroy your whole emotional level of, I don't like this word balance, but your emotional levelment and your mentality if you're not aware. So what we're doing is bringing you aware. Now, being in at least a normal range of physical and psychic health, which most people are not in at least a normal range of health, will give you the opportunity to fight off and fend against these kinds of things. Um, most of the problems that most people have are caused by built-in societal attitudes rather than personal matters or rather than any uh, deliberate research or any proof or evidence that anybody's found. Most things are belief systems. Let me see. Slight perceptions unnoticed by the conscious, like I was telling you, you see things and you think you didn't see it, but your mind did see it but perceived by the unconscious might stimulate conscious words, acts, and deeds, or imaginings at some later date without themselves becoming conscious to you at a conscious level. Did anybody get that or did I just go over everybody's head? Did I go over anybody's head? Yeah. 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 Okay. Certain things can be done today that you don't catch consciously. And like, let me, let me see if I can think of an example. Let's say you're watching a, 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 a movie, and there's some subliminal message in there that says, buy 7-Up. At this moment, you may not consciously see it. Your subconscious mind, unconscious mind, sees every freaking thing. Right. It comprehends every little thing. I don't care if it's a subliminal message, I don't care if it's written in a language you do, do not even understand. It could be in German or in Sanskrit or anything else that you think you don't comprehend. It could be in Chinese or Japanese caricatures. If your subconscious mind saw it, it registered everything about it, comprehended it entirely, read it and decoded it, and placed it in there. Now, at this moment, you may not go and get the 7-Up. It could be, you know, 30 minutes from now, an hour from now. Man, I'm thirsty. I need a 7-Up. So later it will occur as an incidental happening that still may not come to your conscious mind that that's what it was. But it's still something that was put there that will cause an action from you at an unconscious level that's completely understood, but at the conscious level, you didn't catch it at all. Do you get it? Yes. Okay. Now, one of the things that you want to understand is that the psyche is able to produce conscious action from unconscious experience, including things that occur in dream state. Like, for example, there are people that have the capacity to astral project to others that are a little bit weaker in their spiritual power because they're stuck in religion, thinking it's spirituality, and religion and spirituality are two totally different things. Religious people are not necessarily spiritual, and spiritual people are not necessarily religious. But certain things can occur um, at the unconscious level that will result in a conscious production. Um, let me try to think of something else. Oh, forget it. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've always been powerful with the power that's inside you because you are power. And when you're melanated, you are more power than others. The darker you are, the more power you are. 
The lighter you are, it doesn't mean you're not powerful. It means you're not as powerful as someone darker than you. Now, advertisers know this about you. They exploit this ability of your mind to unconsciously take something in and unconsciously cause a conscious action whether you knew it or not. So they're always feeding you the, the messages and the programs that they want so that you can create the reality that we were talking about yesterday. What is wrong with the world? Whose fault is it? Why? Do you remember how you created it based on yesterday? The images they put in our mind. The images they project. They put in your mind. And you being a superconductor, you transmute it, you transmogrify it, you transform it, and you put it out and make it a real thing. You create the reality. They don't. All right. So they do this by using uh, uh, the advertisers in particular. They exploit your power. And a lot of these people that create movies exploit your power with these post-hypnotic suggestions. And like I said, I am a clinical hypnotherapist. They can put a suggestion out there today, and it may or may not manifest today, but at some point, it will manifest, especially for those that are not in tune or that weak. And at a point, you will get where you will all, you start to come to real, like I do. I'm at a point where if I'm watching a movie or I see a commercial or anything, I always see the subliminal go by. I'm at a point where I can always see. I'm like, okay, that was a subliminal. I may not be able to identify what it was, but I know that it was one. Now, one of the things I don't like about DVD, and people keep saying, oh, you can do it with DVD, that you can do with videos, is you can take a video, and you can find the subliminal, and you can read it word for word. All you have to do is go back to where the point is that you saw the subliminal flash or whatever on a videotape and hit play. And as it's playing, you hit pause, 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 pause. And it'll slow frame through and show you the entire subliminal. You'll be like, dang. But when you do it on DVD, and people keep saying, I have not been able to catch it on DVD. The, the, the way it frames through it doesn't frame right on a DVD. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You're not, so I know you've done it. Well, I don't know what kind of signal it is, but... Um, you need to be cognizant of the fact that there are people that are playing on your melanin all day, every day. The energy transformers or chakras spiral and move your energy. Your melanocytes spiral and move your energy. This movement or vibrating frequency radiates primarily upward and outward. That's why it's bigger at the top than at the bottom. Okay? Now. I want to get beyond that. I only wanted to add that because, again, that was something that you need to know. But there's something more important that I want to go over. And I call it sexuality, sexuality and singami. Excuse me. The reason I want to give you this prior to our departure today, there's a lot more on um, chakras and stuff, but uh, what time are we supposed to stop? Yes. Yeah. S Y N G A M Y. S Y N like Nevada, G like George, A M like money, Y. Now let me start saying this, and I know some brothers are going to get disoriented. <laughs> we got a whole hour and a half? I thought this thing went from 2 to 6. 7. 2 to 6.30. 2 to 7.30. 2 to 7.30, 2 to 6.30. 2 to 6.30, 2 to 6.30. Y'all need to let me know so I know just what to give and what to hold back on. 2 to 8.30. It was 2 to 6.30, but if you want to go to 7, that's fine because we started 30 minutes. Yeah, 7 o'clock. 7.30. Started on the 30, you got to end on the 30. So y'all want us to do 360 degrees, huh? Excuse me, it depends on how you feel. We want it all. Because she has just, she has just, she's tired. She has just, she's tired. I mean, I'm, 
I'm tired and I have jet lag, but I can still keep going. Okay, well, we got that much time. I'm going to give y'all another tip. I'm going to finish. I'm going to give you a couple more tidbits on the chakras and then move into the sexuality and sing out. I guess people are like, man, forget the chakras. Go to the sexuality. But, uh, <laughs> however, the, um, I don't know if I told you, but it, it, I don't think I did. Your chakras, the, which are transformers, as well as your melanocytes are multi-dimensional. Did I mention that? No. They're multi-dimensional and can go through quantum dimension, uh, dimensions. The movement can be amplified by your own intellect, your physical movement, your breathing, certain sounds that you cause, and eugeration. I call it eugeration. Other people call it conjugation. Some people call it sexuality. I don't like the word sexuality because it's too much like uh, sexuality. And this word means to cut and sever. You guys do know that, right? Yeah. Okay. So I, I prefer this word. That is an extremely powerful word to call the thing that you guys keep calling sexuality or sex. I call it eugerating or eugeration. Now you can amplify these spiraling transformers with your intellect, certain sounds, certain colors, breathing, physical movement, and eugeration. And believe me when I tell you, when you're doing eugeration, you can get <laughs> sounds, <laughs> movement, and breathing all knocked out in one trip. And, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, did I say sounds? Yes. Okay. Okay. Bell yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the motions or movements, or movements, of the mental, aerial, or eugering energy are interdependent. They're all interconnected. If any one of the three, and did you guys catch the three or do I need to give them to you again? All right, these three things are the, uh, the physical, I mean, excuse me, excuse me, uh, 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 the mental, the mental, that which is, flo the air, the aerial, which is floating around in the energy around you, and the breathing, and your sexuality are interconnected. So the mind, the breath, or air, and your sexuality are interconnected. If any one of these three is impeded in any way, it impedes the other two. Most people, the first place you're impeded is in your breathing. Most of the people that look like me because they're under perpetual attack and continual stress, they don't even breathe deeply. Are there any martial artists in here? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say most of our people don't breathe? Right, so they don't get the chi. So there's what you call shallow breathers. The fact that you don't even breathe properly affects everything else. So who, what was that? Somebody said something? You breathe from your belly, not from your chest. Right. Now, the people that breathe okay and whose minds are okay don't don't, are not involved enough in sex. We have a lot of, what is this word? Uh, people that don't have sex, what do they call them? Celibate. Thank you. We have a lot of people that are celibate in our community. Why? Because brothers and sisters can't seem to get together. Why are you laughing? Tell me why. Tell me what's funny. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? He said something about all oh, the masturbators. Okay. <laughs> I guess that is kind of funny. <laughs> but a lot of our people, brothers and sisters, can't even come together anymore. There are so many single sisters out here and so many single brothers out here. It's ridiculous to me, especially in the conscious community. And it is the spell. And then you have the people that are having all kinds of sex, but their minds are messed up. <laughs> so it's very, it's very um, complicated 
to find in our community people whose minds are together, meaning they're not too hung up on the spell, that also breathe deeply and breathe properly and participate in so-called sex. If any one of those three things is messed up, everything else about you is messed up. Okay? Now, <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> Pro, okay. Let me give you give let me give you some information on breathing. And I what I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I don't I might have time. Because the sister did ask me to give you guys a particular breathing technique. I have an extremely, and it's not mine, okay? Not, nothing I'm telling you is my stuff. I have an extremely powerful breathing technique that if, if we have time at the end, and y'all don't let me forget, you know, I'll share it with you. You can't do that now. <laughs> do it. Man, do it. Long time from now. Do it now. I need to be able to think so I can hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and you know we should have made copies of that. Let me see if I can find my uh, reading notes here. Y'all actually want to stop right now and start breathing? <laughs> yes, sir. It is magic. You can pull out of the spiritual Yes, you can. I like him. <laughs> Y'all really need to have that brother do a lecture. Seriously. <sighs> See, the only thing is, okay, okay. How many people want to stop now and do this breathing? I'm raising my hand. For well, I, I don't see. I need to see your hands go up. How many people want to hold it till the end? Okay, we'll hold it till the end when we get up. Don't let me forget. <laughs> don't let me forget. All right. Breathing and prolonging your breath or getting the capacity to hold your breath at longer intervals will lead to supernormal powers. And when you're melanated, you will become more supernormal than others. When they talk about Superman, how many people have ever seen this, this show that comes on television called Smallville? Anybody here never seen Smallville or Superman? I heard of it. I know Superman. Anybody here never seen Su Superman? You got a movie coming out of Minnesota. Okay. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just give you guys this. Can I erase this? Yeah. I mean, we know. I think we know Jessel. I guess he's like a young Superman or something. Who is Superman? We got Who is Superman? No. Oh, I thought that was Superman. Who is Superman? Oh, Kal El. I am. Who is his dad? Joel. 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 What have the Moors been telling you guys? What are the last names of the Moors? Five. El. Ali. El. Bay. And Day. Now they couldn't make Cal El, Cal Ali, because y'all would have figured that out real quick. So his name is. Cal L. And Jor L, remember J, I, and Y are the one and the same. Who's that? Who's your L? Your L. Your L. Your L. Your L. Your L. Okay? <laughs> the Smallville and, and Superman shows tend to, it's hard to get with those because they make Cal L a European dude. But from what I what I comprehend, from what I remember, what I recall, the very first Superman comic was written by a brother about brothers. It wasn't the first DC comic. You know, Europeans have a good way of getting their hands on things that are ours and making them theirs. So now DC Superman comic is supposed to be created by whoever. But it was a brother that created the first Superman comic about a brother. You guys are Superman. There's a book out. Who's this book by a brother called Superman to Man? Man. Y'all need to get that. Superman to Man. You're Superman. You're Supreme Man. And you've fallen to man. But you ain't. Thank you. Somebody was paying attention yesterday. You ain't mankind. There was a comic book a couple, what, a couple years? I guess a couple, two decades ago, Superman versus Muhammad Ali. 
Yeah. Muhammad Ali yeah. was a Superman. Yeah. Speaking of Super, yeah. speaking of Muhammad Ali, that was a brother that showed you every time you saw him how to speak of reality into existence. Right. Right. If he told you you going down in two, you was going down in two. <laughs> that brother would say, "I'm the baddest. I'm the prettiest. I'm the smartest." Who has to be convinced of your power? You. Who has to convince you of your power? You. That has to come from you. Once you convince yourself that you are all that in a bag of chips, you are all that in a bag of chips. I don't care what everybody else is talking about. Other people can say whatever they want, but if your mind is blown up to here, your brain is, I'm, I'm gonna tell you as a, as a hypnotherapist, your mind is hardwired. It is required to respond to your voice above and beyond anyone else's. Mm -hmm. You have the power to program and reprogram your mind. If you do not and you fail to give it orders and instructions, then other people will give it orders and instructions. So. Now that you're clearer on words, go home and start creating some audio cassette recordings and playing them over and over at night while you're sleeping. Give you, oh. <laughs> I need a whole lot more money than I currently yeah. have. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Go home. Parliament program and reprogram. And you should use the word need. Something like, huh? You can use the word need. Could you look it up? Oh, so need and one is okay to use. You can use one. See, because th this is the problem with this is the problem with melanated people. What do most melanated people say when they need more money? You talk to them, and they say things like, you know, like for example, if y'all getting ready, if a bunch of people are getting ready to go to a concert or a party, and they come across somebody they would like to go, and this person doesn't have the finances to go, what do they usually say? I can't go. I don't have, you know, I don't have enough money or I can't afford it. What they should be saying is, well, I would really like to go, but I need a whole lot more money than I'm currently told to make this trip. It's all in what you say. They're say either way, you're saying the same thing, but one way, you're telling your brain, I can't and I don't. So your brain goes, okay, I can't and I don't. That's what it does. No, seriously. If you say, I would love to go, and you do, um, but I need a whole lot more money than, than I have at the moment in order to go. Then your brain goes, okay, I would love to go, but I need, a, and it, 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 you might be surprised, you go in the closet and find $20 or $50 in the pocket that you didn't know was there because you spoke it out. Okay. <laughs> well, he, you know, it takes a minute for this stuff to, to register, but, but they're right, you're not blocking no blessings. Okay, and I don't know how I got off out there. But we were talking about breathing. Breathing and holding your breath for longer retentions will, will cause you to become a super normal individual. It will enhance your power, it will begin to destroy diseases, and it will lead to, who was talking about telepathy earlier? Where's that brother? Yeah. It will lead to the capacity to, to, uh, to in, uh, interact tele telepathically. It will increase your powers of clairvoyance. It will increase your powers of clairaudience, destroy physical weaknesses, and it will burn up old karma. You yes. Say, holding your breath? The capacity to retain a breath oh, okay. for longer intervals, which comes with practice and time. Talk to the martial artist there. Expanding your breathing, breathing deeper and deeper and deeper in the abdomen and being able to hold the breath for longer and longer retentions. See, the thing that we study in Bob Wise is that, first of all, I can't go to a lecture, I can see you from one, one end to the other end. First of all, we're breathing at a beast, we're breathing 18 minutes per minute, which is breathing, breathing like this. That's a beast. That's the, that's the problem. <laughs> The way we want to breathe is breathe in 30 seconds in and 30 seconds out at all times. That's the master of breathing we're trying to get to. Okay, did y'all write that down? Sounds like a, like a tidbit. Anytime somebody's giving you, just because just an individual's not up here at the podium, doesn't mean they're not dropping something unique. Breathe in 30 seconds in and 30 seconds out. Breathe in 30 seconds in and breathe out. Almost every 
the thing. Even if you run, you should try to master that. That's what's talking about slowing down disease and all that. All right. One must know that the improper flow of energy is the cause of most of the mental and emotional problems that you have. So those of you that are stressed out and on antidepressants and the whole nine, this is what's going on. Your energy is not flowing properly through your chakra centers, through your breathing, and through the, well, the melanocytes, you really can't control that, but it, it's, it, everything is affected, okay? Um, the effect of these problems is neurotic, psychotic, criminal, and sexually perverted behavior. Those are the things that, be, that begin to occur with people that have these different blockages. So, um, the lotus petals that I was talking about earlier that they call the chakras, those are feminine symbols. That's what I'm saying. I'm getting ready to start uh, probably tacking on. The sisters are going to love this. Brothers are going to be like, oh, shoot. I'm ready to go. <laughs> these are feminine symbols, and the reason they're feminine symbols is because the lotus has threefold nature, like women. And it's very similar to the uh, enlightenment phases of man. It's three-part evolution. First, the lotus has its roots in this muddy soil of earth. The stem of the lotus plant rises up through the water and the, the, the petals of the lotus sit above the water on top in the air. So it's at all three levels. There's something very similar that can be said about roses, too. And thank you for the roses. Those are some very powerful flowers also. They're multidimensional uh, as far as spiritual. Lotus flowers are um, multi-level, earth, water, air. Roses are multidimensional. Now. One of the things that you want to comprehend, was that, what was I saying? Man evolves, uh, that's what I was going to say, in, in these three phases, through matter, then the intellect, then spirit. And another word for spirit is stagnation, superiority, or uh, uh, supremacy, OK? So you go from stagnation to superiority, and then you go to supremacy. Or you go from matter to intellect to spirit. So we're going from the base of things, and we're evolving up. We're going to get into sexuality in a minute here um, because it's a part of personal power. Sex can do two things. You should write this down. It can either rejuvenate the individual or it can debilitate the individual. It depends on whether the individual circulates or expands their sexual energy. Expends, I mean expends. X-E-P, E-X-P, E-N-D-S. So if you circulate your energy, then you're going to evolve. If you expend it, then you're not going to evolve. OK? All beings used to be heavily melanated way back in the day. Everybody on the planet was melanated. Everybody on the planet was what they would call a type of female. Have you told them this yet? Yeah. yeah the Bible. No, Amari, and one of the Bible said the Bible says that. Well, no, yeah, the Bible um, seminar that he gave was last week. I think. It was last week. Like, yeah. No, I'm just wondering if you've mentioned it. Okay. Back in the ancient days, all beings were melanated and what would be classified a female. But they were androgynous hermaphroditic. They had both a womb and an extended clit that was in the form of a phallus. They were more feminine because of the fact that they had the womb and breast and could birth and nurse. That's why they were considered female, although they were both male and female. At some point, we split off and became females over here and males over here. That was where the problem started. And we've been having problems since. <laughs> now, I'm getting, ready to, I'm getting ready to give it to you. Um, 
The ancient original teachers of archaic mysteries were four, mo four mothers called the Wu, W-U. Write this down. Huh? Wu. <laughs> Somebody knows. I heard, I heard a sister say she know about it. <laughs> Clinical psychology is where you learned it? Okay, look where she learned it. In clinical psychology. In the what? Is that European schools? You know it. But, huh? Uh, they do I know also, it. But I also had uh, the type of parents that uh, did a little other things that was indigenous. So that's what I'm talking about? Yeah, there you go. See? Mm -hmm. Now, the Wu were female shaman and priestesses. Can I erase any portion of this? Yes. Yeah. Now, to me, woo, if you stick a mirror here, then you have this. Moo or mo. Right? Now, the secrets of sex are the secrets of women. And men think they know everything <laughs> when it comes to freaking sex. And women can't tell you anything because you just don't want to hear it. So they don't tell you anything. So and a lot of times they want to tell you things and don't know how to tell you things because your egos just get so far out there in the mix. You know, that you... I... See, sisters are laughing. Am I, sis, ladies, am I lying, on brothers? You're not lying. That's right. You're not lying. Oh, okay, I even have a brother that's admitting. Now, they, huh? I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you. They were known as the Eastern, because the brother's talking about the Far East, the Eastern culture and matriarchal mother goddess Hong Shan dynasty. Do I need to write that down? Mm -hmm. Now, see, the Moors always talk about the Shang Dynasty, the Shang Dynasty. They need to go a little further back. Well, the Hong, excuse me? So what are we going to find information on the Hong Shang? <laughs> it's out there. Go find some books. Go to the library. Get on the internet. Okay. There's some books out on sexuality and sexual magic. Find some sexual magic books. Hashtag mm -hmm. Beverly Brenda. Huh? Hashtag Beverly Brenda. Okay, they just gave you uh, one particular. Give, them, give it to them again because they didn't hear that. Pascal Beverly Randolph and also the Dial um, um, of Sexology by Stephen Chang. Mm -hmm. There you go. Let me show you how to recirculate and see. All right. The matriarchal mother goddess Hong Shang dynasty was one of shamanism, animism, and matriarchy. Not animalism, animism. Don't get them mixed up. See, that's why this today's lecture was going to be so independent of yesterday's lecture. The people that didn't make it yesterday weren't going to miss yesterday. This is also known as Taoism. The Shang Dynasty, the one that the brothers that are Moors keep banging on, <laughs> was a dynasty of melanated brothers, and they became the dynasty that was known as the Great Yin Dynasty. Yin and not Yang. Yin. Y I N. And it should have been Yang. I don't know what the, what's the deal. It's probably Yang, but you gotta remember. This information comes from these pink people's books, and they don't want you to have the whole truth, so it probably is Yang. No, that would be Y-A-N-G. It 
the Shang dynasty that the Moors talk about, that dynasty and Confucianism, which, what does Confucianism sound like? Confused. Thank you. Confusionism. That's what it sounds like to me. The Shang dynasty and the Confucianism dynasty promoted patriarchal ideals. That's when the madness started. Now, confuse, oh, now, now I gotta give the brothers this much credit. They weren't beating up the sisters in the Shang dynasty, they were just promoting penises. Penis. However, Confucianism on the other hand opposed matriarchy, hated it. And Confucianism is the era that is continuing to this very day. Christianity is where hatred of women and hatred of melanin originated. This is one of the reasons why people that look like you should never touch Christianity with no pole of any kind. Can you be a Christian? It ain't possible. If you're, not mel if you're melanated, it's not possible to be a Christian, but you cannot tell your Christian grandmother that. Okay. Now, along with almost all religions that are practiced today, these concepts of hating women and hating melanin are still carried forward. This was because of Yanni, which y'all use, a lot of people call the womb, or coochie, or whatever y'all want to use for these funny little names to call it. Okay. And, and later, melanin envy. Coochie envy, melanin envy. That's what it's about. Suckers is jealous. These pink people don't hate you because of whatever you think. They hate you because they're not you. They're jealous. They're afraid of you because they know how powerful you are, and they're jealous because it ain't them. Now, a lot of the same people, pink, and I'm like my sisters tell me, my sisters say this. The pink man, who is unfortunately currently ruling over everything, is the most disconnected entity on earth right. from the great mother. Right. Sisters are the closest example of the great mother. The melanated mother. Brothers are right there with her. They're melanated too. Pink women are not melanated, but at least they're female. Pink men ain't melanated, ain't female, they ain't connected. So they hate everybody. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Um, we're, we're under the assumption that uh, the Caucasian male is running. He's not. He's giving all respect and honor to his maker, the white female. So the balance between the black, the woman of color and the woman of no color, while she tries to do you, you stay trying to do us. It's like a dog chasing the steel. I want to be like you, but I can't tell you who you are. She injecting her lips, skin, hips, doing her hair. She's going to be you. The idea is to come back and replace you so that when the blessing comes, they'll get it and you'll reject it. But we emanate men as well. That's what he just said. They're trying to be us, we're trying to be them. Because all these sisters got this blonde hair. And that's fine if there's some conscious brain under there. If you're just doing it as a fashion statement. But some of these sisters blind and with no brain. Don't have a clue what you're talking about. Um, but these people are jealous. Now, penis envy is a word game that's thrown out there to throw everybody off. Women are not, don't have penis envy. Sisters have penis frustration. <laughs> now y'all don't get it twisted. We don't envy your penis. We just get frustrated with y'all in them things sometimes. Because y'all seem to think that those things are everything and all the thing, and there's more to the thing than that thing. I mean, you know, the sisters may not say much because some of them are probably sitting with their mates. But if they had, had the chance to say, 
say a word, they would let you know. Look, you know, and, and yeah, sometimes you really ain't all that. You know, but I love you anyway because of other things. The brothers think it's this thing here that makes them the thing. There's so much more to you guys than that. If only you had a freaking, well, those of you here now, you have a clue. But if most of these brothers out here had a clue, who they are and what they're dealing with and what they're walking with, there's so much more power to them than what's between their legs that it really is ridiculous that they rationalize it down to something so small. As big as it is, it's small <laughs> in comparison to what y'all really got going on. Now, I got to say that women have no need to envy the penis. Euguration has to be a two-way exchange, which means that the woman being fulfilled is all important in order for her to give the power of her essence to her man. Because once she has, once she is what you call um, <coughs> satisfied, then she, who's laughing? <laughs> once she is satisfied, she has the capacity to secure you and put you in a protective energy cloak, an energy ball. And a lot of sisters do it without even realizing that they're doing it. How many of you guys know sisters and brothers that are married and have something like 10 and 12 <coughs> children? Does anybody know anybody that had a nation yeah. or a tribe? Yeah. 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 Most of those brothers, most of those brothers, unlike their single comrades, have all of these children and somehow they still manage to feed everybody. Somehow they manage to have their job and stay on this job and their single brothers can't get no jobs, mm -hmm. getting kicked off the jobs and fired and whatever. And these same brothers that have these tribes, for lack of better word, because the word tribe really is a European word. We don't have tribes, they're tribal. But for lack of better words, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. How about little nations? They have their little nations in the community. These same brothers are the same brothers that you know that got all kind of attitude. Don't let the police stop some of these brothers. Have you guys ever seen these brothers I'm talking about get stopped by the police? Mm -hmm. They talk to them cops like they're wearing two and four tails. And what happens to them usually? Nothing. Why is it that these brothers that have all these children that are with the same woman since forever, <laughs> can keep a job and hold it down and feed their whole family and not go in and out of jail and in and out of jail and in and out of jail and back and forth on unemployment like a lot of their single comrades. Has anybody ever even wondered? Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed before today? Yes. That is because these brothers have the capacity to satisfy their woman and she protects them. She has a ball of power around that brother so he can just do whatever, whatever. He might even cheat on her on occasion, but he still comes home with love and respect for his mate. And she may even know that he cheats on occasion, but there's still love and respect in the relationship. Nobody is in a situation, they're not in a situation where every time you look up, she got two black eyes and big old lip because he's beating the hell out of her, or he's always drunk and beating up the children. They are in a loving, respectful relationship. So when they get together, she protects him. These single brothers don't have the protection. That's why they can't get the jobs. They're in and out of jail and always in trouble, keep getting stopped all the time. They're not protected. Now, do you need me to stop while you flip? <laughs> OK. One of the things that these individuals understand uh, you know what, maybe they don't understand it. They may not. See, sis, there, there are some brothers that are kind of single, that also do okay, but even though they're single, they have some sister out there that's got a, that they're messing around with, that's got a protection around them. Now, if you keep it, if you, if you think about, I'm, I'm going to have you think about yourself in some relationship you may have been in where things were going relatively well for you and you were involved in some loving, respectful relationship. And things were okay as far as your finances were okay. and You know, you may have been living with the sister or not. But at some point when you guys broke up, especially if you broke up badly, 
all of a sudden, all hell seemed to break loose in your life. <laughs> Do any brothers in here remember anything like that ever happened? <laughs> Only one? Two. Bunch of liars. Yep. <laughs> you know it. Oh, okay. the, what it is is this. When you break up with your sister that has you protected somehow, and you'll know who she was because you'll know that for some reason the police weren't really bothering you when you were with the sister. For whatever reason, you were doing okay. But when you broke up with the sister, if you broke up badly, a sister will do this. What the hell with you, nigga? Yeah. That kind of thing. Curse you. And no, it's not that she cursed you. What she did without knowing it is she cut her life from you. She severed the tie that bound you. A lot of sisters will have this problem with their sons, too. Their sons will be protected. They don't even know they're doing it. There are a lot of sisters that just, you know, they, they, they know they got to keep something going on on their sons. But sometimes, in some instances, you will have some sons that will decide one day, he knows more than his mama, he's smarter than her, he's bigger and badder than her, and she might say, the hell with you, boy, get out. And then she'll ch -ch -ch, sever the protective tie. Next thing she hears, you know, did you hear about your son? He's in jail. It's because she cut her security from the brother. I'm saying this to say to you brothers, even if you're going to break up with a sister that has you protected, and the one you have may or may not have you protected, if she always high, always drunk, and this and that, she ain't got too much of nothing going on around you because she don't have a lot going on around herself. But if she, even if she's stuck in Christianity, she may still have a protective light around you. If and when you decide you want to break up with her, you don't want to break up badly because as long as she has love for you, she will still have compassion and concern for your well-being and still have a certain amount of protective light around you until she sees that you are with a better woman. Then she'll cut it off. 